Okay, welcome back. Um, so uh, what the second video is going to be about is just getting um, moving around Fusion 360 a little bit just so that you can um, kind of get familiar with how electronics integrates into, into Fusion. Now, uh, the thing you have to understand about um, uh, Fusion Electronics is it's relatively new, um, you know, within the last few years. Um, sort of new. Um, it used to be a product called Eagle. Um, this was an open source product initially. Then a company called CADSoft bought it. Um, we're licensing it. Um, so in the academic world, uh, I used Fusion or uh, Eagle Electronics back when it was made by CADSoft for, for quite a number of years, probably 10 um, years. Um, I very much enjoy that, that tool. And then, uh, th then basically Autodesk started to integrate that product into their their web-based CAD system called Fusion. And I think that's where, um, you know, uh, th there's a lot of a momentum at Autodesk to, to really refine this, this uh, Fusion 360 platform um, to allow you to do entire product design workflows within that tool, whether, you know, whether it's designing the board, um, you know, manipulating the enclosure where, you know, you're working together with a mechanical team, or maybe you're, you know, maybe you're a in a relatively small organization where you're doing both. And then you can take that to your CAM system and do things like, um, you know, prepare those, those things for, you know, cutting molds or, um, you know, building those prototypes with 3D printers, whatever. A lot of different things can be done with that CAM back in. Um, so, um, so yeah, so I had some familiarity coming in with Eagle. Um, I've, I've done that 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 previously. I've used a number of different circuit board systems over the years. Um, Eagle is probably the one that I use for the longest over time. Um, so uh, what we're going to do in this particular video is just basically look at Fusion and how do we um, kind of get started with with a project? How do we how do we at least um, bring one up? So I'm going to switch over to my Fusion 360 screen here. And so, so this is Fusion uh, up and running. And so these are all my uh, projects here um, that are in my, um, you know, in my ISE development, ISE intelligent systems engineering is where, where I work here at Indiana University. And so um, I'm going to create a new project here and I'm going to call that... Um, uh, We'll call it the video light sensor. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. It's more to keep you uh, keep you aware of it. Um, and so it might be the case that you don't have that panel. You don't have this little this little side panel here. Um, if that's gone away, if it looks like this for you, um, then just go over here and click on this uh, thing here that says show the data panel. And voila, you, you're there. Um, you know the hub where you're writing it is up here. Um, go ahead and create a hub. If you're in your personal hub, see I've got a couple of them here. I've got my personal hub and then I've got my team hub. Well, the personal hub has a limit on the storage size. So um, I found that out uh, the hard way. And so I ran out of space in there and it was like, you can't create new projects. And I'm like, whoa, this is, you know, this is going to be problematic. Um, I create a lot of projects. And so, uh, I, you know, once you go start creating other hubs, these hubs are practically unlimited uh, when it comes to your storage that, that you've got there. So create yourself a hub. Um, and then, um, oops, let me see there. Okay. And so I created that project and it's, it's dropped it way down here in the big pile of projects I've got here. And I'm gonna hit this little pin and I'm gonna put that up near the top here. And so now I'll see it here. Here's my video light sensor. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and go into it. So now I'm in that project. Of course, that kind of limits the, what I can see here, which is good because I don't wanna see it. I don't wanna see everything right now. I just wanna see this particular project. Now, this is where all of your artifacts are gonna live. This is all cloud-based. Um, you know, the pluses and minuses of that, right? You, uh, you, you can have access to this anywhere where you, you know, you can run Fusion, which is pretty much anywhere when you look at the, the web browser inter interfaces or, you know, um, um, you know, if your machine crashes or whatever, all your data is, is up there and safe. Now, um, you know, but if you can't log in for whatever reason, you know, your can expires or you've got some problem, if you can't get into, uh, into Fusion because your credentials are no longer valid, uh, while well, you lose access to your data. And so, um, you know, it's a plus and minus this sort of thing. Um, for us right now, th this seems to work pretty well. All right, so here you are, you're in your you're in your hub, you've got this window over here and it looks very mechanical. In fact, that's what it is. It's it's for doing a mechanical design here. So, um, so and I think you'll find that the, there's a lot of similarities between 
the you know the, the sort of mechanical workflows and the electrical workflows and those are kind of evolving over time how they how they synthesize those together uh, but but when you come up here to the top and you go to file and I want to create a new design you'll see that I've got these other options here right and so these other options are going to let me do things like create new electronics designs or new libraries or things like that so um, so um, let's go ahead and create a new electronics design and it's going to um, give me this, um, you know, this window, which is the, the electronics project browser. And so this is going to let me do things like um, create a schematic and then create the board. And then down the road, we'll see that we can, well, from that board, we can create a 3D rendering of that board. And then once we've got that, we can do things like link that to a mechanical enclosure so we can be um, checking to see if things fit, right? And so we can see if our parts are going to interfere with our enclosure. Um, in the case of the embedded systems class, you know, I provide an enclosure, um, although I give them the opportunity if they want to create an enclosure of their own. Uh, but I'm going to provide one just so we have a reference. So we're not doing too much co-design, right? Um, you know, when you're writing software and designing hardware and the enclosure's uh, fluid and you've got all this sort of movement in your design, it can be kind of tough. So, so it's good to have something pinned down at least, um, at least uh, temporarily um, until you can think of a, a better way to do it. So, so okay, so, so here we are, we're in our, our design. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save it. So I'm gonna hit Control S and I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it in this video light sensor and I'm gonna call this, um, um, I'm gonna call this light, let's call it sensor design and I'll save it. All right, so it, it makes this, you know, kind of pay attention to this icon over here. This is the project icon. When you're, um, when you're coming back in to open this up, you, you really want to, um, to pay attention, open this. One of the things that is, it, it, was, it was true for Eagle and it's true for uh, Fusion, it really wants to have the board and the schematic up simultaneously because it's, it's using a, a shared database between those two and data is passing back and forth. You know, that's unlike, you know, if, you know other sensor systems I've used like Mentor Graphics or KiCad, um, they have discrete steps where you transition between those tools and you move data between them. Um, you know, the Eagle sort of uh, Fusion 360 electronics world, um, it's doing that, that sort of seamlessly and it's doing it um, continuously. And so it really, to keep those synchronized, they really both have to be open. So just make sure you open the light sensor design first. It'll, it'll, it'll warn you if you don't and, and they'll tell you to do it. Uh, but, but make sure you do that. Otherwise, your design can become uh, unsynchronized, which is problematic. All right. So I'm going to come up here, and this is a this is a new schematic, and we're going to do just a single sheet schematic for this for this board. Um, so I'm going to click on that, and it'll give us a uh, it'll drop us into the schematic design interface, which is is intimidating. I know with any new CAD system, there's a whole lot going on here. Um, um, th this right here is is basically your um, libraries interface, um, if I kind of slow, you know, this is the design manager. This kind of gives you the sheets. Um, this will be the layers that you want displayed. Of course, layers become a lot more important when you're, you know, when you're in the layout side of things um, than they are in the schematic, but it's still, it, you know, it's still important to, 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 to know what la layer you're on here. And then, um, then I'm gonna place components. Well, the first thing I wanna place on this schematic, to kind of give it a, uh, a boundary, so to speak, is a frame. And so I'm gonna just type in frame here. I could go up to the library browser and I could uh, um, I could go and look for these. These are all different frames. If I click on one of these, you can kind of see it at the bottom down here. This frame here is, is gonna give me the extent, basically a border around my schematic so that I can confine where my components are, are being placed. So I'm gonna put those into a, um, I like to use uh, the frame A, um, and so in, in the sort of landscape, so, so sideways as opposed to portrait. Um, I'm gonna put that in here. If I double click, I get this here, and um, I'm gonna plop it right here in the middle. And when I plop it, now I'm gonna escape. Um, you know, some of these windows, this kind of gets busy. If you want these to kind of go away, you can kind of hit these little arrows here and make them kind of slide off to the side. You can always bring them back 
later if you want them. Same thing with this um, with this design, um, with this data panel, you can hit X and that gives you a little more real estate um, depending on what kind of monitor you're using. I'm using a 24 here um, that's a flat 24. If you've got one of these giant curved monitors, those sorts of problems are probably not problems for you. Uh, but but anyway, so, so here we are. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to call this the uh, light sensor schematic. All right. So there's our schematic. Um, and when I notice when I saved it, it put some information down here, this light sensor schematic, the name of it. Um, you know, you can put things like logos, you know, um, company names. Of course, if you, you know, if you're doing this in a commercial setting, you know, you're going to have all kinds of sort of verbiage there, you know, related to copyright and uh, sort of patent protection and, and other things that might be relevant to your uh, your schematic to protect it and to, uh, to, to make it fit within the corporate documentation structure that you've got. The other thing that I'll, I'll say as we go through this, if, you know, these controls down at the bottom in some ways kind of loosely mirror what you would see in Fusion on the mechanical side, uh, I'm going to do the zoom to fit to make it fit. Um, the other thing you can do is you can change the grid settings. Um, you know, when I work, I tend to like to have the, them on. Um, and you want to leave these grid sizes, this 10th inch grid setting, you need to leave that the same. You don't, don't change that grid size. Because if you do, then, um, then what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to wire things up. All the components in the library are typically designed um, you know, with the pin set at 10th inch. And so if you violate that, if you go in there and you start putting components on weird, um, weird grids, all of a sudden you're not going to be able to hook things up. So it's going to be problematic. Now, for doing things like moving text around, it's got an alternate grid here. And so that's at, um, you know, a uh, hundredth of an inch. And so in those cases, you, hit, you, know, you can hit the Alt button as you're moving stuff around and it will let you place on this other grid. So the Alt, the alt key. All right, so I'm going to say that. And so now you can see these grids. So, so here we are, we're kind of ready to, to take on the world here and to create our first schematic. And so um, I'm gonna leave it at here for the video, for this video, that kind of gives you, a, okay, here's, here's what we need to do to, uh, to, to start up. Now, um, I will say this, if you don't have, um, if you don't have a Fusion account and you're a hobbyist or you're in an academic setting, whether it's, I don't think it matters whether you're in K-12 or whether you're in higher ed, I don't think it matters to Autodesk, um, you can go and get one of these accounts for free. And so I would encourage you to go out and, and look that up um, and, uh, and go out there and, and request an account um, to get going if you're just following along uh, and you're not part of the class. Uh, if you're part of the class, uh, you should have all those instructions and you should be ready to go. All right. Um, so next time, what we'll do is we'll start plopping parts down on this schematic uh, to kind of get us towards a, a light sensor.